Um, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for having me. So, uh, the Irish Community Engaged Scholars um, Program, the pilot. So our um, program begins in many ways, similar to that of Carolyn's in that um, we um, received, the university here received a, um, an award from the Health Research Board um, for the PPI Ignite Award. And um, as part of the program, training education is one of those pillars. And so we were very much well set up to adopt um, that program, such as Community Engaged Scholars Program. But in order to do that, we need to have additional funds. So PBI Ignite applied for the HRB award, the KEDS award, which is the Knowledge Exchange and Dissemination Scheme award. So that was really the catalyst to um, you know, ad ad adapt um, the Engaged Scholars program model from the US. Um, also with the PBI Ignite, um, the International Steering Committee, uh, one of those members is one of the members um, that of the original Community Engaged Scholars program. So we very much had good connections to start out with. So with that award, we... Um, Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. So with that award, um, it really um, provided us with a catalyst to um, implement the Community Engaged Scholars program. So as with any award, this is PPI Ignite, they'll celebrate. <laughs> so... Uh, and after the celebrations, um, we very much needed to get down to work. And, you know, so first thing we did was we contacted Carolyn, of course, um, to see, well, okay, we've got this uh, funding, so where do we go from here? So just to take a step back and looking at the, um, the US program, their program is embedded in principles of community-based participatory research, and of course, we're public and patient involvement. Um, so that's just a definition that you can read for yourselves. And then we're working off the definition of PPI. So they're very similar um, in many ways. And you know, it's about collaboration, um, that equality, working together, and you know, looking at priorities, prioritizing you know, a topic of interest um, research to, to both the academic and the uh, community organization with the aim of making change and improving um, health. So where does the Community Engaged Scholars Program fit? Um, and if you think of that model that Carolyn had showed as well, these are very similar. Um, but looking at the top, this is where we're trying to reach, you know, because this is true community-based participatory research or real public and patient involvement when you get to the top of that uh, spectrum. <coughs> so what is the Irish Community Engaged Scholars Program? So it's essentially, it is the same as the US model. Um, we provide formal training and pilot seed uh, funds for partnerships uh, comprised of at least one community partner and one academic partner to um, implement a pilot study embedded in PPI principles. And again, the purpose is the same. Um, it's to increase the capacity of those uh, public uh, researcher partnerships, um, again, underpinned by PPI principles to improve the health of our communities. So the aims are to incentivize and foster community academic partnerships, um, encourage collaboration, um, adapting those programs that um, were developed in the US to fit our culture and context here. And then our um, seed monies are 5,000 for each team. And as we are a pilot, we want to learn from this particular cohort uh, to help inform future delivery of the program. So our competencies are the same. Again, looking at um, understanding and applying the principles, concepts, and approaches of PPI um, for the teams to conduct a pilot study. Um, and that's on a shared health um, priority that they've identified together. And then they're to build foundations because we want them to sustain those partnerships. And uh, hopefully we'll be sustaining them as long as um, nine, 10 years down the road and, and much longer. So adapting the actual program. Okay. Not. Okay. So um, again, it's similar, we have training. Um, we have much different timelines um, than in South Carolina. 
as we're working towards uh, on the on the CADS timeline, which is uh, one year uh, for the full program implementation of the award. So we are being flexible in that we'll you know modify and adapt. So we really looked at the program to see what are the core um, areas that we need to I guess work with our partnerships on. So we're going to have eight face-to-face -face workshops, and then there'll be online self-paced learning. Uh, the teams will conduct a pilot study. Um, as I mentioned, they receive uh, 5,000 euros each. And again, we work in partnership with PPI Ignite so that they'll develop dissemination strategies together. Um, and this is all with the aim that they'll write a grant, larger grant submission um, towards the end of the year. And, and again, sustaining this is key to um, the future of those partnerships, is building those foundations um, and for sustaining change. Um, now, again, in the US, they have uh, mentors that they will meet with. Um, and I guess w here at the university, we, we have um, PPI catalysts, um, but we're growing and developing our expert um, base in PPI. Um, so we will have PPI Ignite mentors meet with our teams as needed. And again, evaluation the program as it's a pilot program here. So looking at what stage we're at in piloting the uh, program here. Uh, so in January and February, we just reviewed the materials and had uh, teleconference conversations with um, Carolyn and the PPI Ignite, uh, the team here. Uh, we developed our call for applications and that went out on the 8th of March. Uh, we had an information session on the 14th, and then applications came back in on the 8th. So it was a very quick uh, turnaround, um, and I guess in many ways, you know, we, we did expect a lot of our um, community academic partnerships, um, but we had um, very good feedback and um, quite a few applications were submitted. So then we had our public review on um, the 12th of April. Um, and that was followed on along by panel review. So the public review feedback fed into the panel review. And at that meeting, it was decided um, as to who, uh, which teams would be awarded. And those applicants were then uh, notified in April. <coughs> so then the 26th of April, um, we contacted our partnerships um, to prepare for um, the first session, which is tomorrow, as uh, Carolyn had mentioned. Uh, we also conducted a scholars assessment and then this, this really feeds back into it's a similar in many ways to a needs assessment <coughs> to see where um, the areas of need may be for, for those particular um, partnerships as some have experience in quantitative, others have experience in qualitative research um, and some people are, are novice to both those for example. And so that workshop is tomorrow. So these are our um, three teams that have been awarded. Uh, so the first team, um, their study title is The Impact and Burden of um, Chronic Fatigue Syndrome in Ireland. So they plan to develop a collaborative patient-driven research agenda and approach. And the community partner there is Orla, and um, the academic uh, partner is uh, John Cullinan, um, who's a health economist. And their overall aim for the study is to develop a collaborative research agenda and approach to identify and understand the impact of um, chronic fatigue syndrome on individuals and their families, as well as to the wider economic and societal burden of um, ME. The second um, team is, um, the community partner is Irene Gibson and Denise Dunn, and they're from Cree, that's based here in Galway. And the academic partner is Dr. Una Mead, um, who's here. Uh, I'm along with Molly, um, Jenny McSharry and Chris Noon, and they're the Health Behaviour Change Research Group. And their study is um, electronically delivered cardiac rehab on uh, an exploration of patient attitudes and program acceptability. So they hope to conduct a collaborative research project to examine patient attitudes towards electronically delivered cardiac rehab and to explore the acceptability and usability of Activate Your Heart electronic cardiac rehab program for patients. And the final um, partnership is, um, their study is aphasia, and their study aims to co-create and co-implement an aphasia awareness campaign at four sites in the west of Ireland, and, um, and they have the support of uh, members of those uh, stroke support groups. 
And the community partner is Martina Green and uh, from the Irish Heart and Stroke Foundation and members of the Banastool Stroke Support Group. The um, academic partner is uh, Ruth McMiniman uh, from Speech and Language. Um, so as Carolyn has mentioned, you know, a, a huge piece to the success of any partnership is, um, you know, being ready for your partnership. So just because you've a common interest doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be successful. So through working with the, um, through this toolkit, you know, we hope to give them the opportunity to um, really plan for, and as Carolyn mentioned, you know, possibilities of <coughs> conflict and conflict resolution. Uh, so these are just to give you an idea of um, scholars' assessment. Um, I know it's quite difficult to read, but it's just, again, an idea, um, a list of the subject areas, uh, you know, in regards to research and areas of PPI. Um, and then this is just a memorandum of understanding. Um, it's a best practice to um, have a memorandum of understanding, but uh, we did not make a requirement. So we, again, for us, as we were a pilot, uh, piloting this uh, particular program, we want to give uh, flexibility to our partnership so that they can, um, you know, give us feedback and uh, help us pilot and develop the program. So these are just the the proposed areas. They're not necessarily um, set in stone. Again, we'll work through uh, with our partnerships um, to decide um, what are their needs. So the next steps uh, are for our partnerships to attend the training. Uh, complete the pilot study, present the results, disseminate, and then work towards developing a large funder application, and again working on sustaining their partnerships, and again feeding back into the pilot to, to inform future um, community engaged scholar programs here at NUI, um, providing mentorship as needed, and conducting process and CESP evaluation, and then obviously reporting back to our funders about the program. So I'd, I'd like to acknowledge the, the Health Research Board um, because it wouldn't be possible to um, you know, bring these partnerships together uh, without their support. So we're very grateful for both the uh, PPI Ignite Award and for the, the KEDS Award. And I'd also like to thank Carolyn. Um, she's been wonderful and a huge support for us in getting this um, up and running here at NUI Galway. So this is um, you know, on, our, on our road to uh, Community Engaged Scholars Program here at NUI, and uh, you know we have set an ambitious agenda over the next uh, seven months. So um, you know we hope that uh, you know we certainly look forward to um, working with each of the partnerships and to develop and see where this pilot leads us to. So thank you. Thank you.